need by going to the gate and sitting down with the elders. This kind of wisdom, the how do I grow in my grief, has to come from God. That has a limitation on us. Uh, it cannot be bought with money. Just because you have a lot of money, Job says this wisdom, godly wisdom, cannot be purchased by money. You can't write a check out. You can't write a check out. And so it is more valuable than the most precious jewel. All of us probably have in our house someplace the most precious jewel that we have. Maybe it's a necklace that a parent or grandparent somebody had. I know a brother here had a, a, a tie pin that his great grandfather had. It was all this all the his estate. And then he had a brother that was on drugs, took that pin and went down to her eyes and sold it for five dollars. He hit on crack. He did not appreciate value of that pen was just an opportunity to get a hit. And so so it's more valuable. I need to appreciate the wisdom of God and value that above my life, above my experiences, above everything that I can come up with. That's the kind of wisdom that's going to help us to grow through grief. Thoughts? Okay. God alone knows this place. You can search for it. But God says, I have it right over here. <laughs> you always search it in drugs. You're searching in all these other things. You're searching in wealth. You're searching over here. And God says, I got it over here. Submit yourself to me, and I'll bring you to it. The fear of the Lord, the, the scriptures talk about, is wisdom. That the whole of man, Ecclesiastes 12, the whole of man is to fear God and keep his commandments. That reverential awe. When God walked into the room, you and I dropped to our knees. Mm -hmm. God's will becomes our will. Jesus gives us a perfect example of that. Jesus says, his will is my will. I and the Father are one. So he gives us an, a, 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 an example that you and I can actually be in this mindset. That God's business become our business, so it is our business. And that's the beautiful part about, about Proverbs 9 10 as well as uh, Job 20 28. Questions or thoughts? Mm -hmm. And so as we as we kind of walk through this, this is the best I can do. This, this is about the best setup I think we've had so far, right? <laughs> <laughs> so so here's Job's final defense. And we'll see a little summary of this in a second. When he had God, chapter 29, verses 1 through 6, how I long for the months gone by, Job says, for the days with God watched over me. It's amazing when you and I go to church and everything is fine. I mean, it rained until I got in my car and it stopped raining. The sun came out, had a beautiful drive. Well, all right, you know, the Lord is on the throne. <laughs> Job says, when I had God how long for those months? <laughs> Everything was wonderful. So it tells me going through grief, I'm going to have those moments when I reflect before the grief comes. I wasn't this sad last year. I wasn't. And so, so Job says, I can identify with that. I, I know what you're going through. I, was, I had some months, boy, before all of this, it was wonderful. Kids had birthday parties and they invited me and, and all of these things. I, I had it going on. Hmm. Mm -hmm. When he had blessing and was a blessing to others. This guy, we talk about how he lost his family and he lost his cattle and all of that. Joseph, I lost something else. I lost my respect, my honor. He said, I could walk in the room and uh, the young men saw me and they stepped aside. Uh, and the old men rose to their feet. Can, can you see that? Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. See, everybody, you like to vote for him. You know, he walks in. Everybody stand to their feet. Wow. Joseph says, I used to be like that. You have now covered with ashes and, and, and sores and all of those kinds of things. I remember, I reflect, when I was a blessing to others, people would come to me for my wisdom. And nobody comes now because they're afraid I might be contagious. 
how for it is true. So going through grief, sometimes it might not be actual like this, but I feel like that. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm a Christian. <laughs> and yet I'm, I'm, uh, God has left me. I, I, I used to be, I wish you had talked to me last week, but I could have really been encouraging to you, boy, because things were going great. This week, not so much. All the wheels off my car. All four tires are flat. When he had security, Job says in chapter 29, verses 18 and 20, my roots, Job says, will reach to the water, like Psalm 1, uh, and the dew will lie all night on my branches. You know, I'll tell you, uh, I get up in the morning, I said, uh, uh, how did you leave the sprinkler on? You walk outside, take the dog out, all, you know, you come back, your feet are wet. So, you yeah, would let the sprinkler on. No, that's the dew. Oh God, it's God's watering system. Yes, and it, you don't get a bill from that. <laughs> and so Job said, that's, that's when I have security. I'm standing by the rivers of water. I'm standing by the, 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 the pond, and my branches are growing. That's before I went into this grief. This is a part of that grief cycle that we've talked about. I feel angry. I feel depressed. I feel discouraged. I, all of Job can identify with us. It's a wonderful book to study. When he had respect, Job says, when I talked, let me tell you, nobody talked no more. When I spoke, I don't know if you've been in a class, you know, like in school or whatnot, and you're trying to figure out this algebraic equation or whatever the case might be, and you're scratching your head, and you go, I have no idea, and the instructor comes in, and they, and they make it so simple, and you know, man, you know, you don't ask no more questions. And so I took biology, I think, about 20 times. You have to, when you go through high school and college, I had a, 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 a biology teacher in, in, in uh, what was it, Forest Park Community College in St. Louis, Missouri. Young lady, but she really knew her biology. And for some reason, she said it in a way, but it must have been a good day I had. It, it finally made sense. And what, didn't ask no questions. I, I got it. I got it. All this photoplastic stuff taking place and all that. But somebody taking the pictures out there. But anyway, she, she, yeah, I forget most of them now, but anyway, she, she, yeah. <laughs> Questions or thoughts? Questions or thoughts? So, so in chapter 30, Job mourns about the present. It's kind of a summary. If I'm going through grief, my present status is tough. My present status. I know yesterday he said, Lord is better. I know tomorrow you said, God's going to be great tomorrow. I'm talking about right now. The old folks said, right now. Uh, uh, what, what do you do? I'm mocked by the vilest of men. You know something when non-believers correct us. Mm -hmm. I was at a, a hospital uh, bed and, and the patient was about to pass away and somebody who didn't even believe in God was giving them advice mm -hmm. to trust in the God that they said they serve. Wow. wow. And so, so sometimes we are mocked why, 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 are you, why are you taking uh, antidepressants? Why, why, why you know, you, 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 you're a Christian. Hmm. Wow. wow. And they don't darken the door to any church house. And so, Joe said, that's my degradation. Uh, lower than the low. And there's a, a blue song, or a, some, some song said, yeah, they're lower than the snake's belly. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's, that's pretty low, isn't it? <laughs> you got low on one of them. Wow. Uh, low than the low. His illness, chapter 30, verses 16 through 19. His isolation from God, chapter 30, verses 20 through 23. And his distress. Job says, I'm going through this stuff terribly, terribly. And so, so here, here's all the things that I'm, that I'm mourning about. All the things that I'm hurting about, all the things that's reviling me, all the all can you see that going through grief? So I think this helps us when we go through grief. Say you might not get to all of these points, but this is what Job went through. 
And so if you happen to go through it, you're not by yourself. You're not by yourself. Of course, you're going to feel something about it. Okay. And so we begin to see all, all those kinds of things as, 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 as Joseph is helping us here. Um, so now, watch Job as he takes his action. Job calls for judgment upon himself if he has sinned. Now, now Job knows he's not perfect. We're talking here is that I have an expectation that bad people will be beat up on. But us people that are striving to serve the Lord, everything should go smooth for us. Mm -hmm. and, and so that becomes a challenge for us because in this life you're going to have tribulation in 10 days. Mm. And so when that tribulation come in, and what makes it even, despite me with you, more better or more worse, <laughs> it is when I'm going through all of this and I look over here at my neighbor and they can't even spell God. Amen. And they're doing great. We're talking about growing through our grief. If I had lusted, Job says in chapter 31, verses 1 through 4, 9 through 12. God, if, if I, that's what I'm guilty of, I'll pay for that. Mm -hmm. Kind of like Paul says, if I've done something worthy of death, I don't mind dying. Mm -hmm. Paul says, you guys got me locked up here, and I'm a Jew, I'm a, I'm a, a, a Roman citizen. You can't do that. If I have done something worthy of death, even as a Roman citizen, you can kill me. But locking me up, threatening to kill me because of my faith in Jesus. Paul said, now Paul was not right at all. Not, not, he was not a perfect person. He persecuted our brethren and brothers and sisters. If he has been deceitful, if I, if I you know, put my finger on the scale, you know, you're buying five pounds of bananas, I got two pounds of people that I put three pounds of pressure on the scale here. So you're going to buy five pounds, but you're only going to get three pounds. Just if I'm deceived, I'm willing to pay for that. Uh, how about if I have mistreated my servants? If I've done wrong to those individuals that, 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 that serve me, that, I, that, I, that work for me, if I've done wrong, I, I can understand the punishment. I can understand you judging me, God. But that's not true. I've not done that. And so sometimes you and I, as we go through grief, we kind of argue with ourselves, don't we? Mm -hmm. why, am I, why am I going through this? Why am I hurting like this? Why, 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 why? And we might not realize that God has taken us to where wisdom is. Amen. Amen. If I mistreated the poor, how do I treat the poor? And this is a tough one for especially living in this time when the economy is. Yes. Have you noticed so many people 